Aries, welcome to your 2022 annual reading. We're doing astrology here and uh, with a splash of tarot, we'll see what comes out randomly. You know, if the shuffling on camera bothers y'all, I'm sorry, I can't please everyone. Y'all know this, right? Aries knows this, right? Aries got the attitude, I can't please everyone, so I'm going to go please myself, right? <laughs> So that's what we're doing here. I am going to shuffle on camera because I think most people like that. Look at this. The cards are already talking and I haven't even got to the astrology, but look, I love it. It's beautiful. You got a new beginning here. Aries is solid. It's stable. We'll find out what this is about, you know, as, as the cards fall out. Let's get into the astrology and I'm just going to tell y'all, you know, we're going to go deep. All right. And so for those of you who have a short attention span, you can skip ahead to subtopics if you like. Um, I'm going to start off talking about the main energies of this year for you, um, but then we'll get into a bit of a you know reading and discussion on romance and relationships, and then career and money, and then we'll close out with some health and healing advice. Okay, so let's start with the astrology. You've got your north node this year in the second house. For a little while, it'll go into the first house. Okay, so this has you very focused on your money, yourself, your resources. Some of you may be idealizing something as you get forward movement this month. Some of you, um, you have a brand new start here in love. I'm going to, we'll get into that. We'll see if this is about love or about money or maybe both. Okay. Um, you know, this is about your money, maybe idealistic this year um, on the love front. You have some romantic prospects here that are offering you something stable, something um, secure, you know, if you want to build that this year. All right. But I, I do see that you've also got your, during this year, you've got your South Node um, in that eighth house. And uh, for, for a bit there after April, it will um, hit your seventh house. Okay. So there might be something with relationships that you're having to release. Okay. Um, I'm going to say overall, you know, this energy with the nodes is at least for the first four months, of this year pushing you to focus on your personal resources and self-worth issues and you know other people's resources and intimacy with others well that might be taking a back seat ideally right you want to balance out the two and not go to extremes um you you got to be careful though with this north node in the second house about you know spending too much money or wasting it because that issue will come up later it'll be brought to a head if you do that and i think as you move closer towards um april the issues with sex and intimacy will improve but again it's like who's going to make that cut in terms of who are you partnering with in april when the node slips into that first house placement that's going to put more of a focus um, on yourself your reputation your physical body and so it, it's during this time that health concerns could become a lot more emphasized, at least in your head. And you, you got your mind on it, at least. And so um, be careful about anything that could risk your reputation or, it, you know, again, it just could simply be that you're thinking about, I, I want to rebrand myself. Um, how, how do I want to be seen by others? How do I want to be known by others? And you're just being more mindful about how you're projecting your image to other people out there. So... Um, and for some of you, you know, that's going to be choice, but others, it's going to be by force, um, that it, you know, other people will put that, that under the spotlight under some kind of scrutiny. So just be aware. Um, otherwise this is going to really allow some new experiences to come your way, though they might be temporary. You know, Knight of Cups is kind of in the moment maybe not so right like if this is with romance for example um we can idealize partnerships but right he's not a king of cups he's not really able yet to go the distance because he's a knight he's not a king and now the cards are really coming out um page of pentacles you've got some good money news coming to you all right Ooh, lovely very much somebody's making a very positive decision about about something. This is blessing with money, and somebody is making a very positive decision here. Um, I 
don't know why though I'm getting that somebody is like holding back or they're saving up money. They're making a decision to save up money for happiness, okay? For their own happiness. That's good. You're holding back for your own happiness and you're making a decision to do that. That's really good. So I warned you earlier about that waste, you know, wasteful spending. I think most of you, you understand um, and you're going to be frugal. You're going to be frugal, I think most of you will. So the first half of this year, it is gonna feel like, you know, a slow build towards the climax. <laughs> uh, in late July, when we have a triple conjunction involving Mars, Uranus, and the North Node, so as annoying as this slow start can be for Aries, y'all know y'all like it quick, right? Y'all don't like to mosey on in there. With my, that, that was kind of a moseying on in there, right? Y'all like that Knight of Wands um, energy. Well, you know, sorry to say the year's not going to start off like that. It's going to be a slower pace. And yet it will continually build as the year progresses. And that, yeah, that crescendo point, that climax, it hits in about July with the energy. So the best advice, you know, if you get impatient with how slow moving things are, um, try to use the downtime to prepare for some major shifts that are surely coming before the year ends. Now, where are you getting your good luck and fortune this year? It's going to be in, you know, 12th and 1st houses, okay? Um, it's really going to, I've been saying this for a lot of signs, and it's, it's interesting because it comes out differently in different signs. It, it presents itself differently, okay? But it always seems to present itself. So far, out of all the signs I've done, and I've done all the fix so far, but... It is consistently, there is in some way a, a greater emphasis on spirituality. And for you, it's with, you know, the first half of this year, Jupiter and Pisces, which alone, and everybody's dealing with that, and that is very spiritual, right? But it's in your 12th house, which makes it even more spiritual, right? 12th house is about um, the spiritual realm, the ethers. And, um, and Neptune's going to be there as well. So this is giving you a lot of support with your spiritual side. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more of that about that and uh, in the health and healing segment, especially in terms of doing spiritual growth and healing and all that. We'll get into that some more in that segment. But I will say briefly that this is going to attract some people into your life that have some kind of mystical or artistic quality to them. And it's placing less of an emphasis on the material in your life. Even though, right, that north node in the se you know second house still the people that you're coming around are giving you know and all this energy in the 12th you know with jupiter and pisces the first half of the year is really helping you with your spiritual development that's the upside of it now the second half of this year shifts a bit because jupiter then goes into your sign in the first house and that brings a lot of blessing to your health and your reputation. So if there have been any health concerns in the first half of the year, I think you're finally going to get some kind of res resolution or progress. And if, you know, you were doubting yourself earlier in the year because things were just not coming together and moving forward at the pace you like, well, I think your confidence and your sense of courage is really going to get boosted. And that could also have you feeling a lot more open and connected than before. And this is from May through October, by the way, and then December as well, where, you know, you have this transit. So might have to do with some burdens and some responsibilities that you've had. I do also want to warn you with this transit to be very careful about excess, especially in terms of things that might be affecting your health. Okay. Um, don't take on excessive responsibilities and duties because I don't see that going well for you. So just, you know, watch out. What's challenging you this year? Well, Saturn is going to be in your 11th house. And so that's bringing about some limitations or restrictions or maybe some heavy responsibilities and lessons having to do with your social life, networking, wish fulfillment, goals, and even soulmates. Uh, basically all things Aquarian, all right? And with the... Um, Eight of Swords there, this is about you needing to, well, it's in reverse, so you breaking out of the limitations, you breaking free, because maybe in the past you thought, well, I need to hold myself back, I need to just stay over here, this is what I need to do. There's a need this year for you to try to find a, find a way to break free of these things. Um, Aquarians, by the way, can help with that. We're, we, we're, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Aquarian, so... We are like a sign that likes 
likes liberation. And we love, we love to help other people get free of things. We really do. Though I gotta say in all fairness, a lot of times we have our own, we need other people to help us get free of stuff. Okay, we're so busy helping other people get free of their shit. And we have our own shit we need to get free of. And so that's, you know, the up and down of getting involved with Aquarians. So might be some karmic lessons. Uh, if you have any Aquarians in your life, some karmic lessons. So just be aware of the Aquarians in your life uh, this year. Around March 28th, Venus is going to be conjunct Saturn. So just be aware that there could be some, you know, disappointment with a friend or jealousy over someone getting promoted and advancing while another person isn't. Um, or, you know, I'm going to say if you've had any unrealistic goals, well, by March, late March, you'll figure it out, okay? And then April 5th, mm -hmm. airy season, right? Mars is going to be conjunct Saturn. And so, yeah, you might feel that there's something holding you back. And it might be you, you know, but there's something constraining you in terms of moving your aspirations forward or getting or really asserting yourself. And so... Something having to do with a peer group might give you, you know, friend group, peers, colleagues might help you, give you some kind of insight to overcome this. That that really wanted to come out right there. So, yeah, this might have to, oh, wow. Okay. Um, somebody thinks that something's unfair here. Okay, I'm just going to say if, if there's some kind of difficulty with a friend group, um, somebody might feel that something is unfair um and somebody might feel like you know what they need to do is not open up and talk about things and they just need to kind of do things on the dl and just not be not be upfront about stuff because this is a this is about you know not talking not taking action or the action being taken is i'm just going to sneak around and do things under the surface right just be aware of that again uh having to do with colleagues friend groups soulmates and that might be something that you need to break free of you need to pray and meditate on is there a better strategy than this because this is very low frequency way of manifesting let's see what's at the foundation here Ooh, the empress <laughs> So I think this is about, you know, you getting um, growth this year. And yes, a lot of times this is like a feminine Aries energy. Um, some say Taurus as well. But it is like a, you know, wife, mother. It's a, about a lot of fertility and growth in your life. Some of you might be resolving issues with a mother figure. You could be that mother, okay? All right, let's get on to the relationships and romance part of the reading i think this year is a year that i didn't want to go down somebody's emotionally disconnected well i, I feel that's going to change okay if that has been going on it's a year when love prospects i mean maybe you're pulling away from it but the astrology is telling me that uh love prospects this year are demonstrably affectionate to you and they are offering you the chance to deepen intimacy and so if you want to find love this year you can absolutely find it i mean look even in this card he's he's drawing himself to her but she's pulling away so be aware of that okay i think that if you're single this is a year that love can really come easily to you if you want it and you will probably be more focused on going after what you want starting in February, um, and then well into May, you could definitely be starting some kind of new romance or conquering a love interest. And then with Venus being in Aries in that month of, of May, well, you could be really emboldened by all of this. I mean, if you really are conquering somebody, and you know the Aries love to conquer, especially the Aries male, don't ask me how I know. Oh, God, be the death of me. Oh. Anyway. So I'll say, if you are looking for a life partner and you're single, probably most likely to find that person the third quarter of this year from like June to September. But if you are coupled, let's talk about that in February, this is a time when the relationship could be a, become a lot more passionate and committed. However, there will probably be some tests, okay? And it is possible that you are reconnecting um, to love you know yes if you have been emotionally disconnected i see you getting more deeply um involved with love and reconnected to love with another 
um, from May onward. And if there's been any kind of disagreements where it's like, you know, if you have some kind of runner chaser dynamic where somebody is trying to draw closer and the other one's pulling away, well, I think this could likely get resolved May onward. Obviously, there's free will. Okay, I mean, the energy is supporting that. But, I mean, if you have willed yourself to not, you know, to not be in a relationship, a romantic relationship, you're determined to remain single or you're determined to not open yourself up to love and you just want to keep things loose. Well, hey, you know, God honors free will. I'm just saying the energy here, it might be. I will say with the energy, if you're coming from that perspective where you want to be a free bird <laughs> or loosey-goosey, uh-oh, you might end up developing feelings for somebody that you had not intended. So be aware of that, okay? Okay. Um, and obviously, some of you might decide that, you know, you're just going to separate and cut it off. Again, if you are so willful, like, I don't want to do that, this could, or somebody in the dynamic is so willful that I'm not going to connect. I'm not going to open my heart up to this. I'm not going to feel, I'm not going to allow myself to feel what's out on the table. Well, yeah, I mean, it could be a time where people part ways. And that would be like June through October. Some of you, I mean, if you are in a committed relationship and you're totally open to these energies, I'm saying it could develop into, um, you know, marriage. I just, I don't encourage any rushing into it, obviously. Um, there are going to be difficulties that come up this year, you know, despite all the energy promoting you getting more emotionally connected with another. Um, and spirit is bringing those people in, right? We saw it over here. Spirit is bringing in love prospects. Where is that darn card? In it for the long haul. I mean, it might seem in the moment that things are slow moving and that they're just idealizing and, you know, rom romanticizing and whatever. It seems very surfacey and not fully mature on an emotional level. But what they're bringing is something really solid from which you could build upon if you want to, right? Um, there will be challenges this year, but again, whatever challenges come up are opportunities at the same time for you to strengthen that relationship. Now, I'm seeing with the death card, there might be a Scorpio that is relevant. Yeah, this came up when I was talking about separation, and I will say that in this particular deck, it, it can indicate a separation, an ending of a relationship, maybe a period of abstinence, okay? Okay. Um, where somebody is really focused on self-love and their career and their money and getting blessing on that front. Again, maybe because of where the nodes are in that second, first house. It's about me, 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 and where's my blessing? Um, and yeah, you, with the seven of chalices, maybe have a lot of options here. Somebody, if they pull away and break up, it's because they're going after the gold and they think that they have a bunch of options maybe and that they can just, I don't know uh keep playing around you know or at least fantasizing about it because this can be wishful thinking this can be fantasy land and if somebody's just not deciding you know if they're just if it's getting beyond that it's that they're they're like well you know i can go drink from another cup that's not as not not bringing the, me any kind of gravity in this situation where i feel like i have to emotionally connect um now, starting in January with Venus retrograde in Capricorn, it will be in your 10th house. So that is putting a lot of focus relationally on you reviewing these connections and making some readjustments. And that might could be coming from a place of you feeling the pressure to move out of a comfort zone. And by the way, that, that transit could also bring about some kind of attraction with somebody who's older or wealthier or there's something more mature about that person. And it could also have to do with a workplace romance for some of you. And so if you find yourself caught up, attracted to somebody with these kind of dynamics, oof, king of wands, love this one. This is my favorite king of wands out of all my decks. Look at him. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Well, that's you. Um, or just an energy of somebody actually bringing commitment, okay? I, I love this one because that fire sign male, he is as committed to her as she is to him. He is just matching effort, absolutely. And look at the warmth there. It's gorgeous energy, okay? It's coming up. I don't know why I'm here. And what do you need to embrace, Aries? Who's embracing you? And what do you need to embrace? Because I'm seeing... 
there's an issue with somebody wanting reciprocation here, but what are you able to reciprocate? Okay, because there's some energy of not wanting to reciprocate, but it evolves into a reciprocation. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. I'm going to say this. Okay. Going back to the energy um, in January with Venus retrograde in your 10th house. If you find yourself attracted to somebody in the workplace or somebody who comes across as more mature or they are maybe actually older than you, take a step back and think about what is really attracting you to this person. Is it that deep down what you really are looking for is somebody that maybe can mentor you in some way, maybe with business, okay, or give you some kind of career guidance? Just, and it, you know, it might not be that, but really look at what is it about that person that is drawing you in because it reveals what you need. And this is a time of evaluating what you need coming into this year so that you go after that, you meet those needs in this year. Just be careful with commitments that you're making because of social climbing, I'm not loving that, okay? <laughs> um, social climbing or status climbing, yes, gold digger type of relationships. Consider motives not just within yourself but coming from others as to why why there's a desire to partner with somebody. Um, all right, I, I'm not liking the Seven of Swords because, I mean, again, I'm getting something about an unequal. I, you know, I thought you were making a turnaround there, or, Aries, but now with the seven of swords, I'm seeing that there's unequal effort. Okay. Somebody's taking more than they're giving and there's a need to match effort and share sacrifice. And again, this is the second seven of swords coming up showing somebody sneaking around. All right. You or somebody you're romantically involved with is sneaking around lying, cheating, dare I say adultery, Double dipping. Oh, you. Oh my God. A bunch of cards just came out when I started talking about that. <sighs> Might have to do with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or, you know, that it, it's a female energy here. This woman ha might be, you know, put, putting the cold shoulder out there. Because I'm seeing the woman there as well, putting the cold shoulder out. There, she's turning her back on him again on all these. Look, all the women. Mm, mm. Let me say, the only way to thaw this woman out, you're going to have to, or this person, you're going to have to be generous emotionally and financially. There's that Ace of Pentacles again. I'm getting synchronicities here. Somebody wants something solid, mind, body, spirit. They want gratification on all levels. They want the full meal deal. They don't want a light snack, okay? They don't want a crumb. They want a five course meal, a five star meal, okay? Um, but I'm seeing some doubts. I'm seeing some insecurities. I'm seeing things again with both these cards are being hidden. Holy crap, cheating again, cheating, cheating. Sweet Jesus, what the heck you doing? <laughs> oh dear. All right, listen, if this is not adultery, this is there is not equal give and take in the relationship. There's not honesty. There's not transparency. Somebody's not being prioritized. You might live with them. There's a desire to really get closer to this person and make plans. Well, I'm seeing a duality here now. If you live with them, you live with one person, another, if this is a cheating situation, somebody might live with somebody and the, they're close to one person and they want to draw closer to another. Uh, with a Knight of Pentacles, again, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, possibly. Um, there's a timing issue, okay? It might be an age difference. It might be, you know, somebody still got one foot in, in the door of another relationship. It's, it's not a clean break that, you know, there's just... It might be that they've got too much going on, oh, too many responsibilities. They cannot give their all to this relationship. They feel they cannot prioritize this person. And there needs to be some healing of this situation. There needs to be some moderation, some balancing out of things. Uh, perhaps a Sagittarius or a Cancer is relevant here. I'm seeing discontent, though, about um, a partnership, a relationship. You got a lot of cards. Let me move it up. 
a lot of discontent here um, because, you know, something is not really harmonizing. There's some kind of burden. There's some kind of, of burden here. Okay, let me move on. January 8th, there's going to be a um, sun conjunct Venus. So that's going to put a spotlight on your, uh, your love life and your love nature. And so something very significant with your love life may occur during a January 8th. And it, yeah, it might be that you meet somebody new or um, you're enjoying something new with a partner. Um, but this is an energy that's going to make you very attractive or very uh, conscious of appearing attractive. Very positive for manifesting more affection in your love life and your relationships, as I said before. Um, okay, so I'm seeing that. Actually, put that over there. You know, where are you going to, again, where are you going to invest yourself, okay? Because I'm seeing here an issue of looking at the long term and, and moving on towards getting emotionally involved with somebody. This is really, you know, this is, look at this too. This is about emotional involvement. And so somebody, I'm going to say, somebody might might really be reevaluating, uh, moving on from something that they're tired of. They're tired of it, and they want to move towards getting more closeness um, with another person in their life. Getting into February, Venus is going to be conjunct Mars, and so um, that is really going to um, increase your desire for intimacy and even sex. This is really going to ramp up your libido in February. So just be careful because, again, I can see that possibly you're getting attention. You're attracting somebody in um, who might not have the best motives. Um, in this case, it would be somebody who is just kind of, they're lonely and that's, they're not really, they're not really there to make any long-term investment or, you know, it's coming out of a selfish place. They're not really there to take your best interest as their own or vice versa, right? I, it could go either way. Cause again, I don't know who this is. If it's you or the other person, it's a general reading. So, you know, I can go either way, but it's like somebody in your dynamic this year is not going to prioritize you. They're very self-interested. They're very self-motivated and um, they're hiding stuff and maybe sneaking around and it might have to do with some double dipping or some, <laughs> you know, cheating. I mean, I hate to say it like that, but I see a lot of you needing to kind of weigh out um, who are you going to emotionally connect and disconnect with this year at the foundation. Ten of chalices, look, a chat attachment. It's interesting, we, we, we start out with this being unattached, or somebody in the dynamic is, but Spirit is trying to get you to go after what are your emotional values, and really aligning with somebody who shares those emotional values, somebody that you could actually settle down with, right? Somebody who is going to gratify you in a, in a pretty substantial way. And I think that it's there for the taking if you want it, but um, this is a year when you're going to have to be discerning, especially with that seven of chalices. Um, a lot of choices, a lot of options, but not really clear on, on how to bring heaven down to earth. You know what I mean? Let's move on to career and money. This is a year, Aries, where... Expenses are probably going to increase. So be very careful about taking on any more debt or any more liabilities. And if you do that, then things will probably go better for you because unexpected expenses are probably going to come up this year. Um, but, you know, if you've been careful about managing your existing debts and liabilities and not taking on any more, then when these unexpected things come up, it's not going to be so hard. Yeah, King of Wands in reverse, well, that's your energy. Um, why are you showing up in the reverse, okay? Are you getting impatient with something uh, this year, okay? 
you know, generally I like this guy. Um, you know, he can represent a boss or somebody working in, say, communications, marketing. I mean, even if you don't work in that, that line of work, it might have to do with putting yourself out there in some way. But um, I am not a fan of him in the reverse because it really shows, um, you know, like a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, could be you or somebody you're dealing with who it just won't listen and certainly does not pay attention to their intuition um, because they're so in the moment of what they want that they can't slow down and hear what others are saying or what spirit is saying to them. And uh, yeah, that's, that's not cool. I don't, I don't really like seeing that. Okay. We'll, we'll see where this goes, but um, you know, back to debts and liabilities and expenses increasing and all of that. I think that overall, you got to be mindful this year of the long term when making purchases and ask yourself, like if you're considering buying something or investing in something, you got to ask yourself, is this going to be useful? Is this going to be valuable? Is this going to give me a return on investment? Be a very conscious consumer. Buy what gives back to you and returns value, basically. Now, I think you are, with energy, going to have to be more careful with your career this year. So there's some kind of realization I think that you're going to have to come to that um, hard work um, is not really the answer. It's not always the answer. Sometimes it's about working smarter, not harder. Because particularly this year, you know, hard work is not really going to get you the same results as it does others. And it might seem very unfair. And listen, I totally can, uh, you know, have compassion for that. I've been through it myself. It was brutal when I got dealt that lesson in life. I had been working 60 hours a week um, for two years. Okay. And then had to deal with out of nowhere, YouTube changed the algorithm and let me know that they don't give a beep about how hard I, you know, there was different things going on out of my control. And so I had to pivot and readjust, you know, my business. I see with the two of ones, you're going to be making plans. Okay. You're definitely, you got to make some plans here and it might have to do with business partnership or who you are associating with yourself with in business or allying yourself with in business. Some of you are going to be tempted to change your career or start a new business in the first half of 2022, but I'm going to advise you that this is probably not going to be a good idea until about 2024, and that is when it's most likely that you're going to leave a long-term job. Look, there's the two. There's another two again. Okay, it's like you're weighing something out about partnering uh, planning and maybe going between. Look, some of you might be planning to open up another location or go to another location. If you're a business owner, maybe expanding to another location, okay? Um, or trying to get an, an additional client, like if you had one main client or something like that, all right? Um, if you're an employee, maybe you wanna transfer to another location, you're thinking about that. There's some kind of temptation to do that. I'm gonna say, this is not a good year for it. I'm sorry to say probably even next year, not a good year for it. But when you get into 2024, it's probably most likely that you're going to leave a long-term job and start a new whole career at that point. But in the meantime, be on the lookout for unexpected income opportunities. And these are probably going to come after April, and they're probably going to be passive income opportunities. And also be on the lookout for any, you know, overworking, overextending that, that just starts slipping into your health, right? You got to take care of your health because I'm seeing particularly with the astrology that that could bring up some health concerns. There's that ace of pentacles again, sweet Jesus. I'm telling y'all, you got a brand new start, man. Where was that? It came up in the general. It came up in the love. It's now coming up in the money. Like, I'm getting jealous. What the heck is this? This is like, I'm going to have to clarify. What is this? What is this? I'm pulling from Lenormand. What is this? Wow, that flew out. Some goal you're going after and it's been like over the hills and through the woods. Might be a contract for some of you, some type of contract. And it seems like some of you have lost heart that you're ever gonna get there and it might have to do with family or health again, okay? Um, some very hurt, heavy burden to bear, okay? There might have been a contractual obligation involving family. 
Some of you, it might have been a health matter within the family. Um, it's been a very heavy burden to bear, okay? You're getting some kind of solid new start here. Uh, I'm hearing laying down foundations. I don't know why Spirit is telling me this is a foundational year for you to lay down some solid foundations in all areas of your life, generally, monetarily, professionally, relationally, mm, even sexually. Haha, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go there. It's out on the table if you want it, right? There's free will here, okay? But again, look, I some of you with this going back and forth, you're going to decide. You're going to decide. Um to lay down the deliberating back and forth about should I this or should I that, or you're going to pick something, okay? Or you're gonna stick with something. You're gonna decide, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna stick with this and I'm gonna keep going. And I, and I feel like I gotta say this to you because this is something that I've been going through myself. I've been getting a lot of these coming up in my own personal readings. And, you know, spirit has been, been dealing with me on, but I don't see it or I don't feel it, right? And Spirit has been showing me, like, you know, when they build houses, the first thing to go down is the foundation. And it takes the longest. You keep driving by that construction site, and it looks like it's not coming together. It's not coming together. It's not coming together. But once they finish that foundation, bam, the rest of that house just starts coming together so fast. So some of you, again, are being taken back to this, you know, earlier this year where you're like, yeah, where is it? You're just kind of going at a slow pace and, you know, mosing or here and there, like, it, it's coming together, okay? Aries, you need to know it's coming together. Just, just, I don't know, somebody needs to be told to chill out, <laughs> okay? Just chill out. Use what seems like downtime to keep laying and strengthening that foundation. And part of that foundation is your health and not working yourself into the ground because you know your health is your wealth, all right? Let me say if you are a business owner, particularly with that coming up, um, you are going to have to be very proactive and efficient this year. Back to the work smarter, not harder mantra, right? Um, keep in mind that as you are trying to expand a business, you need to do that, okay? And also just be aware of how expansion is maybe going to... Um, expose some jealousy in others and yeah might this year come you know create some kind of uh workplace tension and i am seeing with the five of chalices here some kind of grief okay i don't think that you know it's going to be a terrible loss or anything like that but um, on an emotional level, some people are just not on board with you and they're not going to be able to go where you're going, right? And that might bring some grief that some people, um, they're just emotionally not going to be able to, to celebrate with you when you're celebrating um, because they've got their own struggles in life or vice. It could go either way, vice versa, where some people see you getting ahead and it just makes them look at where they're not getting ahead in life or, you know, vice versa. Um I'm also seeing that um, if you are doing any kind of work that reaches a global audience or deals with foreign people, places, schools, or places of worship, um, then your income is likely going to improve after April. So maybe market to those audiences if you can. And I think you're going to see improvement with income. Also, uh, maybe try to um, set up streams of revenue that are more passive because I can see a lot of astro astrological support with that for example setting up a subscription service where maybe you have like it's on auto pay where the members get um you know monthly services or benefits or whatever um or maybe coming up with a routine service agreement where you're their go-to person um and they get a discount they get rewards like rewards programs or um, they become a preferred vendor or you become a preferred vendor basically where exclusive options are given for you know repeat return business okay that's that's going to bless you if you can come up with that right there you're going to get increased consistent cash flow april onward now if you're an employee and you want to change jobs um, probably the second half of this year is going to be the best time to do it and the opportunities for that are probably going to come from uh, you know global global corporations or people who you know live at quite a distance from you 
um, or maybe they come from a different culture or nationality, I can see you getting a lot of forward movement in that way, in that respect. But given the challenges of the first half of this year, you know, I wouldn't hold out for a promotion, I'm sorry to say, um, until, you know, later on this year. Um, and yeah, in the second half of this year, um, I, I gotta say, even then, probably the, not the best energy for getting a promotion because you're having to work for everything you get, I'm sorry to say. Um, but let's see what came out here. Yeah, some of you are, you know, on the home front, uh, maybe dealing with issues um, where, you know, there's some disharmony in the home, and maybe it is because of everything that you're putting into um, working so hard with your career, and that's creating some kind of disharmony, possibly with a mother figure. It's interesting because that Empress came up in the upright, again, another synchronicity where it's something going on with feminine energy here. But I'm also seeing um, difficulty with getting some kind of growth or expansion. And I'm seeing another single woman type of energy, possibly, um, with the Eight of Swords, somebody needing to break free from some type of restriction or limitation and get some kind of balance. And maybe, yeah, because there's a need to get moderation and not be going at extremes where you're working yourself like a dog and, you know, burning both ends of the candle. Um I'm also seeing a need here for um, finding emotional harmony and balance in, in all areas of your life, a need to heal something, focus on maybe healing your body. Um, if you have exhausted yourself and overextended yourself or neglected your health. Yeah, Seven of Swords, there we go again with the Seven of Swords. Um, another synchronicity, um, something showing something has been out of balance that needs to be healed um, and you need to come up with a new strategy. Both of these cards here, the Seven and Eight of Swords, both in reverse, is showing me that you got to break free of something. You know, you, you have to find another way, a new strategy to bring some emotional balance back into your life, some healing. And it might be that you just have to be patient. Or you're going to have to take a moderate, balanced approach with all areas of your not life and not let things get out of whack. Too much of one thing, which culminates in too little of another, you know? And again, listening to spiritual guidance and getting a lot of angelic support. But if this is you over here where you're not listening to your intuition, I think that by um, the second half of this year, it's going to become glaringly obvious that you got to slow your roll and listen to spirit. If you kind of try to get, you know, full steam ahead and just ignore, ignore your, you know, gut. I just got really gutsy. L let me say if you're a student, um, the first two months of this year, probably nothing spectacular. But again, things are going to build up as the year progresses. And you might have really good opportunities to study abroad. Um, and again, that might open up after May and could be really positive. Um, but throughout the year, you can get a lot of opportunities that come up. But the most advancement and acknowledgement that you're likely going to get with studying something is going to be the second half of this year. And especially if you work on specializing something or you work on language, you know, if you're studying language or specialization. Uh, Nine of Swords in reverse. If you have been stressed out about this, you know, your career, and I'm going to even say, you know, it doesn't have to be in formal studies. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be at university, but um, let's just say you're taking some kind of um, continued training or you're trying to learn something new to add to your skills. Um, you might have been, this might have been something stressing you out. I think, you know, it, it'll get better. It will get better this year. Now, if you're wanting to move, Unfortunately, not a lot of astrological support for this um, because of what's going on in your fourth house. So I don't really see moves going on for Aries uh, in 2022. Of course, look at your rising sign, your moon, your sun sign. And if you're partnered, you know, with somebody, their energy is impacting you as well. So, you know, get a, get a private reading, right? And I should have said that earlier on. The most specific, accurate reading you can get is a private reading, okay? Now, I'm going to also say, you know, just generally speaking, the, the energy of the last few years has really made, had you focusing a lot on taking action, okay? It's been very focused in cardinal energy, and that's focused your action with your work and career, but it is changing. If you do happen to get, you know, a new job now or new professional contacts and connections, that's helping you to network with people in a new way. But if you have felt like things have been stagnant, 
Um, and I, I know I said earlier, it's unlikely that you, things, you know, would open up in that way. But if they do, I'm just going to say that it's going to change the way you network with other people. Now, if things have been stagnant, that's going to shift. There's going to be a lot of change this year. But again, you're going to have to put a lot of effort into it and a willingness to um, get out of your comfort zone, especially the first half of the year. And yeah, like I said, you're probably going to have to work harder at it. But more importantly, work smarter <laughs> than others to get the same results. But this is going to pay off for you. Now, what I'm seeing is that you are going to break free. If you felt like you were out of control with your finances or being controlled financially, you're going to break free of it. And um, you're going to avoid some kind of fallout. But I am, I am seeing that some of you, this is an interesting message. It might come through being withdrawing yourself from people who you know don't share values with you, okay? I, I'm sorry to say that. Again, it, 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 this is a strange uh, connection to this love reading about you emotionally disconnecting and figuring out who you need to connect yourself to, okay? Who you need to, there's that right, 10 of chalices yet again, but it's in the reverse here showing that you don't share emotional values with somebody this might have to do with who you're partnered with romantically. You might be married, have children with them. For some of you, Virgo, Capricorn might be relevant here. I'm seeing the fire signs, possibly Taurus, Sagittarius, Cancer, Aries, Leo, Capricorn, Virgo. Okay. When Venus goes retrograde in Capricorn in January, actually it occurs earlier it occurs in december but it's all throughout january pretty much if you're trying to negotiate something having to do with your income that could get delayed um that's really probably going to try your patience just use the downtime to adjust right i saw that here adapt and use your patience and maybe get better organized get that plan together and try to be very proactive. I think after February, things are going to level out. And that's that's kind of what the cards are telling me with the timeline. The most positive months for you, money-wise, are going to be April, May, November, and December. Just beware of late July when we all collectively have that triple conjunction. They could bring some major shakeups with your personal finances because it's impacting your second house. And my advice during this time is to save and invest wisely leading up to August. And in that way, you will be able to kind of alleviate the impact because it will be probably, it'll be a stressful event, if not for you, if for others, definitely, okay? And at roughly about the same time as this conjunction, um, well, you know, it's, the sun is also, the sun and Mercury are, are also squaring that conjunction in the fifth house. So your ability to really enjoy yourself during this time, not, not, not gonna be easy, okay? It's gonna be challenged. And it might just simply be on a financial level um, and you might have to, during this time, choose between the pain of being financially disciplined versus the pain of not being financially disciplined. I know it's adulting, right? <laughs> and yeah, if you find that in late July, your good time vibes are getting crushed, well, you know, because of monetary pressure, well, by October, things could, you know, soften up because you'll have that Venus Kazemi occurring in that fifth house. So that's going to bring you more of a time of growth okay in your life um with projects creative projects and for some of you romance intimacy um family wise some of y'all might be getting pregnant you know let's say that i mean i don't really see it in the cards okay but i do i see it in the astrology all right it's going to be fertile it's going to be very fertile whether we're talking physically or just metaphorically and there we have that Knave of Wands. Um, I have so much to say, so much astrology this year going on with your finance, I'm going to say. That like, if y'all are like wondering why I'm going so long as opposed to love and romance, it's just there's so much more astrological activity occurring this year with your money and finances. I am concerned with a Page of Wands in the reverse because this is about, again, somebody's not able to listen and I saw it over here. Um, and it, it might be that there's they're listening, somebody's listening, but there's, there's some communication problems. Somebody's not doing a good job at communicating. Um, 
there's a commu there's communication struggles during this time and i want to i want to warn you that came out when i was talking about that triple conjunction in late july uh, and it's involving fifth house which has a lot to do with self-expression so some of you just be aware okay try to be mindful during that time and it's going to be stressful it's going to be challenging for a lot a lot of people so try to be mindful of hearing people out and trying to um, overcome any challenges that you have with communications because I really see that as being a real issue um, that if not addressed in a mature way, you're going to have conflicts that are otherwise avoidable. Now, November, Jupiter is going to go back into your 12th house. It will be retrograde, so it's going to have you reflecting on earlier this year when for the first, what, five months it was there in that placement. And so privately, you're probably going to be reevaluating, you know, how maybe you have self-sabotaged the success that you set out for earlier this year. Um, maybe you, um, maybe you were too tight fisted. I'm going to, or somebody was with that four of pentacles in reverse. I don't like that. Do not like that. Um, because that's really the darker shadow side of, of being frugal to the point of, greedy, hoarding, <laughs> uh, overly self-protective, or somebody around you doing that. And, and this reflective time has you identifying maybe what's causing you to self-sabotage or, you know, who the hidden enemies have been, you know, or the hidden factors that are causing you to not accomplish what you set out for earlier this year. And I'm not, and I'm not saying it's that you're not going to accomplish your goals this year. It happens to all of us. I set my goals every year. And every year when I come to the end of it, I have to look at what I accomplished and what I didn't. And it's very telling, very telling. And when I, I you know, look at the, the goals I didn't accomplish, I have to ask myself, why wasn't I able to pull that off? What was the problem? How can I address it? And I get a lot of personal growth in those moments. And then other times, sometimes the answer is, you know what, I thought that wasn't important to me, but actually other things came up and showed me that it, it really wasn't that important anymore. I'm dropping that from my goals list. So again, you come into some reevaluation and again, maybe you don't value it or maybe you were being so protective that you just couldn't open up to something else. I, I think you're, you're addressing this um, starting in, in around November. And I think also the energy has given you a chance to decompress from the pressures that came up in late summer, early fall. On the downside, I have to warn that this energy could be a bit anticlimactic, all right, um, and a little bit humdrum giving drama in the previous months, okay? So again, advice, use the downtime in November, December to plan for the year ahead with a greater understanding of how you're going to break through the hidden blockages that by now will have been revealed to you. At the foundation, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Oh, yes, somebody somebody around you is, um, I, I, I don't like this, somebody is really um, not good with money, okay, or they might look like they got a lot of money, but they're using their money to, to buy access and influence. It's a very unhealthy relationship with money. And so they might, you know, have a lot, but they're an emotional spender. Or, you know, they're using their money and their assets and their leverage and their credit and their whatever. They're using the money to buy affection or to buy influence or buy control. So I, you know, I want to warn you about this energy. And I do think that it's something that needs to get healed this year with that temperance card showing up. But let's get on, you know, and find out. Maybe this will come out again in the healing. We're going to pull some cards and see you know if that gets revealed and before i get over there let me let me see if i can get you some financial advice financial advice for this year for aries oh my god you got a lot of i'm telling you the financial aspect is just wow okay visualize abundance in all forms so um, and God is your source, clearing debts, take a divinely guided chance, let go of guilt, cooperation instead of competition. Okay. Some of you, again, it's about who you're allying yourself and associating with, and you need to listen to spirit. Um, I told you, you got a lot of spiritual support this year. Um, but if, if this is you that doesn't want to listen to your intuition or you're ignoring your intuition, you're denying the way that spirit is leading you, I, you know, it came up several times in the spread and, and I don't, you know, I don't do it. Okay. Because look, 
This is showing that spirit is right here trying to guide you, giving you angelic guidance, but you got to have the ears to hear it, right? And I think that spirit's trying to show you who, who you can get the cooperation with. Um, and it might be, again, social groups, friend groups, or whatever. Um, beware, like I said, of jealousy that comes up because some people are getting ahead of the game maybe faster than others or whatever. As I said earlier, it's time to clear the debts. Um, you know, get out of debt so much as, as you can help it, all right? Um, and let go about, let go of it, all right? Um, some of you, I don't know why I'm seeing this, where um, you are maybe in debt, okay? But what's happening is like you are trying so hard to get out of the debt, you are focusing all your energy on it that it's just draining other areas of your life. And I don't know why I'm seeing this, but some of you need to just be like, you know what? I am budgeting X amount of dollars every month to pay off this debt. And I'm not going to feel guilty about it. If the other person wants more, they expect more, I'm going to do what I can do. But by God, I am also going to budget money for, um, you know, having, having a, a vacation this year, for having some R&R &R time, for taking care of my health for uh, making sure that I don't run myself into the ground, for making sure that I'm able to go out and enjoy my life and have a balanced life. I'm going to budget for all areas. And if other people don't like it, well, don't feel guilty about it. It is what it is. Um, and this is about you knowing that um, God is your source, right? And it's the God working within you, right? The, that's the power. It's not other people. Um, it's not l looking externally at the value. It's looking at the value is within and what you bring to others, your ability to solve problems and, and create value. You're the power, and that's, that's the power working within you, God. Some of you, you need to this year um, let go of any kind of um, poverty mentalities, okay? And again, you might be doing great. Um, but again, if you come from a background where there was poverty or, or you know, maybe you were raised by, right? And that just kind of just got passed on to you. That's something that needs to be broken free of, okay? You, you need to study um, adopting more of a... Um, Abundance mentality, all right? Getting away from the scarcity mentalities um, that are so prevalent. Oh, my God, I've had to do this within my own life. Believe you me. Um, so work on that this year, transcending that, the lack mentality, the scarcity mentality, the poverty mentality, and getting into more of an abundance. Not looking at what you can't do, but what you can do. All right. And let's wrap it up with, you know, some cards on health and healing. As I said before, very spiritual year for you, and it, it will be for many, but particularly January through May with Jupiter in that 12th house. It's going to have you probably meditating more um, or just getting more expansion with the spiritual side of your life. And um, this is going to be a great transit for you getting some divine downloads. And make sure as you're getting those divine downloads that you're paying attention to dreams, visions, signs, synchronicities, right? Back to that temperance card. They're there, they're trying, but don't, don't be, you know, those, those fire signs in reverse that are not listening. See, there it is. Meditation, self-renewal, composure, detachment, self-acceptance, equanimity, serenity. I don't think this is encouraging you to be detached. I'm thinking, I think, I feel given the cards, you're being encouraged to find really healthy emotional attachments and to open yourself up. Um, but perhaps it's something you need to meditate on when you are disconnected from others, when you are in your alone time. And I think this is also, you know, if you get into meditation, this is going to help you to relax and find uh, the ability to get centered and calm, you know, even when things don't seem that way, you know, external to you. Um, yeah, maybe because there are unresolved uh, work-related stresses or, or frustrations going on um, that, yeah, if left unattended, like I said, um, could cause some kind of emotional or physical or mental health issues that ultimately cost you with your work, your career, your finances. Now, in March and April, this is probably going to be your strongest months. Um, 
in terms of vitality because the sun is going to be in your sign March 20th. That's going to give you a really significant boost and um, of confidence and courage, as I mentioned before. And then also with the moon in Aries in April, that's really going to shift your mood. And then by after May, um, I think also spiritually, um, your interests become a lot more philosophical and perhaps more outgoing where you're connecting uh, with people who are spiritually like-minded. Maybe going to like meetups or gatherings um, that, that have something to do with spirituality or the people there. Um, you meet people there who are very spiritual. I told you earlier, you're attracting that into your life, those kind of people. If it's not spiritual, it's like very kind of, um, you know, artsy type of people or they have more of an emotional nature to them. But Chiron is still in Aries this year, so just be aware of any painful experiences that come up. Um, we are all dealing with this, you know, but particularly, you know, it's triggering. Um, Aries is triggering those of us who are, you know, like myself, 70s babies who were born when Chiron is in, was in Aries. Um, whatever these painful experiences are, just try to maintain perspective on how can you allow the, the, the healing work to make a way for um, growth and expansion in your life. Physically, if there are any kind of health problems, um, it would have to do with your stamina and your vitality, like I said before. So make sure that you're getting some regular exercise. Some of you might benefit off of strength training. Um, not sure why that came to mind, but... Um, Try to balance it also with some, you know, plenty of rest and refueling with some healing, nutrient-dense superfoods. I think is really going to help you. And be careful also with anything that seems to be minor, especially at the beginning of the year. There might be some what seems to be like minor health issues or minor concerns because I'm seeing that if you neglect those issues, it can really become a serious matter later on. Um... And again, cost your income greatly. A lot of signs have been getting this, this inner truth about insight, clarity, purity, intuitive knowing, consciousness, penetrating beyond the illusion, right? Getting beyond that seven of chalices, the wishful thinking. Um, gosh, these are highly meditative cards. So let me say if there's a mind-body-spirit connection to any physical health issues that come up for you. Um, it's probably going to be stemming from unresolved anger and aggression that has maybe become stored in your emotional body. So try to find a healthy outlet, a way of channeling this energy. Yeah, it could be through exercise. It could be through practicing martial arts or practicing sacred sexuality. The good news, though, is that if you attend to these issues promptly, uh, even injuries, you could really you know, recover very quickly. So, yeah, I think that this is having to do with obstacles that are going on, uh, frustrations, difficulties, feelings of hopelessness, struggling, discouragement because of unexpected obstructions going on. I feel that, you know, the guidance here is to get more meditative, you know, this year. If you don't meditate, I don't know. I mean, I'm really sensing that this is going to be critical for Aries. And those of you who follow me know that I'm not really big into pushing the whole meditation narrative. Although, you know, I do from time to time, you know, look at some videos here on YouTube, free meditation videos. And I do have a very meditative personality. It's just like I'm kind of more air sign it or water sign it to say, you know, you need to think this through or, you know, you need to be present with your emotions. <laughs> but these cards are really telling me that some of you need to chill out. Uh, let go and let God is what I'm hearing. And particularly it's in these moments where you feel like things are out of your control um, or you don't you don't see it. You don't see it just yet because you're laying foundations and and that's not the most exciting thing to do. You want to see the whole house come together, but you're not quite there yet. It's it's like, I don't know why I'm getting, you're like at a summer season in your life, right? Where you just keep have to keep working the um, the fields. You got to, you know, keep carrying water. You know, you got to keep um, watering the plants and pulling the weeds and, protecting them from pestilence, you know, because you're not yet in harvest time yet. You're you're at this foundational time where it's not really sexy, but don't lose sight of what you're doing and why you're doing it, okay? I hope that um, you stay encouraged, and I hope something that I've said here has encouraged you. Until next time, please know I'm wishing you the best as always. Have a wonderful 2022. Be blessed.